save my parents. But instead, I completely broke the universe. Welcome into Box Office Quarterbacks. We are going to have a nice, friendly debate today on The Flash, which Depends is... The definition of friendly is... Not so friendly, is my <laughs> definition. But this is a movie, Ahmed, that has been overhyped for months and months and months, so much to where Tom Cruise apparently called the director of this movie to say how great it was. And then you have uh, well-known uh, comic book movie bloggers tweeting out that this is the third best comic book movie ever made. So the hype going into this movie was at an all-time high. And we are coming off two great comic book movies in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Across the Spider-Verse. Then there's The Flash. I will say my thoughts after you, but go and have at it. Are you sure? You want have to- at it. Let's get nuts. <laughs> Let's get nuts. Nah, so, for one, if you don't want to watch the movie... All you got to do is watch the trailer. You've practically watched the film, the end. I've just saved you two hours and the longest 24 minutes of your life. You're welcome. Um, It was completely overhyped. And I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm not a DC fan. It's just, it was just so bad. The acting was over the top. Ezra Miller has a punchable face. And it doesn't help that they already deserve to be punched in the face because of, and for the state of Hawaii wants to punch them in the face. Uh, you know, it's, it's just so like, it's just so bad. Like they really wanted it to work. And also Tom Cruise called the director. Since when do we care what Tom Cruise thinks? The PR spin on this was ridiculous. I like this movie. I think, considerably more than you but this is not mind-blowing this is not the dark knight this is not across the spider-verse which was a masterpiece which was a beautiful (laughs) multiversal (laughs) film and how a story should be done this is more like it's like a dc kind of love fest here where it's paying homage to uh the snyderverse uh the keaton Keaton is great in this movie. That is my favorite part of this movie is it's Michael so Keaton. Yeah. Um, I also did like Cara Zor-El, uh, Supergirl as well. Uh, the cameos I thought were really fun. Like, and they, I don't think they took you out of the movie. What did take me out of this movie, though, Ahmed, is the CGI. I thought this is some of the worst CGI I've ever seen on the big screen, uh, particularly the beginning when there's babies falling out of the sky and it's so uncanny valley and you have uh, when he goes into the speed force and just people's faces look so disturbing. I I know this movie was in development hell for a long time and it took a while to film it and everything. They had time to perfect this. If not, push this movie off like another year or something because it was bad. There's a reason why The Flash is a background character. There's a reason why he's a background character. I will say it again. There's a reason why the Flash is not a main character. He, uh, it was like, they really overhyped it, like you said. They wanted people to like it. You would think by the inclusion of Michael Keaton's return of Batman would have salvaged this movie. Uh, Sasha, uh, and I'm forgetting her last name, Sasha Kaye, if she... If she was not spoiled in the trailer, it could have made it a lot better. But you know who's already going to be there. It doesn't matter. You can't even appreciate the fact that Michael Keaton's there, that Sasha uh, Kaye does such a phenomenal job because you're just so, like, forced to enjoy Ezra Miller. And who wants to enjoy Ezra Miller? Well... (laughs) Like separating the actor from the movie for a second, like separating that, I do think that they did a a pretty good job playing two roles. Like I I will give Ezra credit there. Like I thought they were funny in a lot of different scenes, the two berries. And uh, I think the main berry had a lot of uh, very good emotional scenes, but 
the second younger Barry, I thought, got a little annoying at times. Like, there, there's a scene where he's running around the Batcave just acting like an idiot. And I was like, all right, just shut the fuck up for a second here. Like, you yeah. are not, like, you're not 12 years old. I strongly disagree, only because it was like you're supposed to kind of feel bad for him. You're supposed to kind of, and I'm talking about Barry, the main character at this point. You're supposed to feel bad. He wants to go back in time to save his mom when it's clearly like, how many more of these movies are they going to make where you're kind of like supposed to feel bad for the main character because they have a troubled childhood? With uh, Barry, it was like, I'm sorry you you suck <laughs> like there's a reason why they have you doing the bitch work and uh and even whenever he's trying to coach himself it's like even he has he has a frustrating time talking to himself and it seemed like everything was just kind of happening so fast not no pun intended just the idea that like he was able to get into Bruce Wayne's manner with little security, with very much ease. Whenever he meets his mother as an adult and pretends to be a stranger, even though he's wearing glasses with a tag on it, the jackets with a tag on it, visible tags, some lady is just going to be nice to you and just be like, yeah, do you want a hug, stranger? I mean... Maybe this was the 90s where people were a little bit friendlier, but I just can't imagine. My mother is the friendliest woman on this planet. And I still think if any random person with a t tag on the glasses just, you know, was like, oh, hi, blah, 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 she'd go, all right, thank you, and just keep going away. Yeah. So I just, like, I just, it was unrealistic. It was like, like, it wanted you to enter this world where, oh, things like this just happen. Uh, people are just going to let you in their homes. Bruce Wayne is going to change his mind overnight after years of growing a beard. And then you're going to be able to turn back time, like, almost immediately after you've gained your powers. I honestly thought that they handled the Bruce Wayne stuff very well. And like his explanation of the multiverse, I thought was better than what, whatever happened in Ant-Man Quantumania. Like this movie is better than Ant-Man Quantumania, but like seeing Bruce again after all these years and uh, just showing that he's a recluse now. And, you know, Alfred has obviously passed away, but I liked the back kind of the backstory there where he said, you know, I don't have to be Batman anymore because, uh, Gotham is one of the safest cities on Earth, so I like that he accomplished his mission. I do like that he went on one more. I do not like the decision to kill Bruce Wayne, Michael Keaton's Batman, in this movie, because this is just unfair to the character to have him go out in a movie like this. And not saying this movie is horrible like Ahmed is is saying it is like I, it this is. is just I just think it's disrespectful to kill off a legend like that in a movie that's probably not going to be remembered in five to ten years so um that's where I stand on it but by by including Michael Shannon in the trailers only for him to be the winner because that's the ultimate thing so wait what happens now the universe is automatically fine because he decided he, it was just a really long journey of him realizing, Oh, my mom should have been dead this whole time. Well, this comes from the flashpoint comic, which is, which it does follow pretty, pretty good where the flash does go back in time to save his mom. So they follow it and he does realize that, Hey, and they allude to it in this movie where, you know, trauma makes you the person that you are. So that's like the the whole theme of the story. And I thought they did a good job with that. I did think the ending was sort of abrupt. And then you tack on a villain right at the end where it's like the dark flash is actually uh, the alternate Barry. So uh, that was that like I knew that reveal was coming because I saw a spoiler on it. But it was predictable. It's just, if you're going to establish a villain, just don't tack it on with 20 minutes left to go in the movie. That's the thing here. I just wish it wasn't so predictable. 
or whenever you find out that this is the case, I, I'm going to take it back to Batman versus Superman. That's the reason why they have a truce. Your mom, my mom, name same. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's cave. It's 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 um, it's like a cave. It's like cavemen. You know, <laughs> it's it's like you, me, same. Like, oh, Jeff, you like movies. I like movies. We're best friends now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm not joking. This is what it is. Like, this is how kids become friends. Oh, you and I like the same thing. You and I, mom, have the same name. So, it, so it, it, it's it was so predictable, and it made me just get frustrated the whole time. I get that. Fine, it aligns with comics. It does all that, but. From a moviegoer's perspective, when you had hyped it in a way that you were like, hey, I will forgive everything that this actor has done. Um, Robert Downey Jr. was in the same boat, which is not the case. But again, separating the actor from the movie itself. The fact that you hyped this movie to be as good as it was supposed to be, but then you have the trailer ruining it for you, just like they did in Fast X. Which, if you haven't seen that train wreck, just watch our review for it. Yeah, this is better than this is better than Fast X. So. I would gladly watch Fast X again, just to avoid seeing this movie. Because I'm watching this movie again tomorrow. <laughs> you're watching this movie again tomorrow. This yeah, it's over. <laughs> this, I so this movie was fun enough, and for me, as like a huge DC fan, it did enough for me to where. And we can talk about the cameos now. So back in the 90s, Ahmed, I don't know if you know this, but Nicolas Cage was cast as Superman in the late 90s. The movie is supposed to be directed by Tim Burton. It got very far in pre-production. Uh, there was a the head of Warner Brothers at the time in his notes for this movie said, you have to include a giant spider. Like Superman has to fight a giant spider in this movie. So they included all that shit. And I thought it was, it, it, it blew my mind when I saw Nicholas Cage's Superman in this movie. Uh, so I love that inclusion. I love George Clooney showing up at the end as Bruce Wayne, because I think it gives Batman and Robin was horrible, right? But it gives George Clooney kind of like a little bit of a redemption, I thought. It was like, hey, look at this suave Bruce Wayne walking in, and uh, he's still around as Batman. And I think it opens up questions to where you can look back at the 90s Batman movies and say, hey, these are all different multiverses, where there's the two Keaton movies, the Kilmer movie, and the Clooney movie, and they're all on different Earths. So, like, seeing Clooney, I thought, was fun. Like, it's not going to be Clooney as the new Batman now. For it's sure. just, it was a fun inclusion. I did really like the cameos, so. I, I like that cameo, too. You're forgetting Christopher Reeve as well. Yeah. He plays the original Superman. And it was so, it was cool to see Christopher Reeves. I was taken aback because I was like, okay. Um, are we just going to start using the AI or CGI now? Holograms, are we just going to start, you know, um, messing with the dead? Can we let, you know, people rest in peace? Uh, and when I saw Nick Cage, that kind of made me forget about that for a moment. And I was like, what the hell is that Nick Cage? <laughs> and so, yeah, so that I meant- think a lot of people aren't going to know, get that reference whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, I just was like, oh, cool, Nick Cage. I like Nick Cage. What the hell is he doing in this? And and seeing George Clooney and obviously the whole who the fuck are you bit about it. But it just, I, I can't, I have to reiterate my point. The movie is forcing itself on viewers to like it. Like you, like it wants you to look at this. We gave agency to a super girl. Isn't this awesome? Look at this. We brought Michael Keaton back for you, 90s viewers. We brought George Clooney back. Wink, wink. We also brought Nick Cage. Yeah. Like, hey, it did enough for me. <laughs> it did then, enough for me. Then, then you are easily pleased. I am I am the target audience, but <laughs> I, it, I would be... I would 
be lying if I said that this movie lived up to the hype because it absolutely didn't. It did not. And that was the problem. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode is I think Warner Brothers decided, hey, we have a problematic star of this movie. We don't know if people are going to be on board. Let's hype the shit out of it. Say Tom Cruise loved this movie. Uh, tell you know, tell all these bloggers to tweet out how amazing it is, and it really hurt the movie in the end because our expectations were high. And I could tell you from the first trailer that I saw of this movie that it was not what they said it was. So it hurt it. Uh, we could go to favorite characters. Ahmed, mine will be Michael Keaton, Batman. I don't know if you have any favorite characters in this movie. It's it's hard, man. I like Sasha Kaye. I think she was probably the best part of this movie. Um, I wish they would have given her a little bit more screen time. I wish they wouldn't have ruined her appearance in the movie because I think that if it would have been a surprise to the audience that nobody saw it coming, it would have been a lot more exciting. Like the whole hype to bring in you know, Superman or something like that. Just, just like, Oh, who's playing Superman. And then you come to find out that it's not Superman at all. I think we could have appreciated that a lot more if they didn't include, or if they would have just hinted that Batman's there, but not Michael Keaton, that would have made the movie that much more enjoyable. But the fact that the movie trailer ruined the whole, yeah, I'm Batman. I couldn't enjoy that scene. And then the part where he does say, want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Clearly a callback to the first movie. And I just rolled my eyes like, yeah, of course he's got to say that because everyone's going to go, yay. Yeah. And See, the, the thing with the marketing, though, I think because of all the problems Ezra Miller did get into in real life, I think they had to shift the marketing to Sasha Kaye as Supergirl and Michael Keaton as Batman. And they're the ones doing all the press for this movie. You, yeah. uh, there's, no, there's no interviews with Ezra Miller whatsoever. Of course not. They're, the only thing that we saw was them showing up at the red carpet in like a, you know, a really outlandish hairstyle. Um, and I mean, again, trying to separate the actor... Uh, from the sh- from the character, it's hard to do so because I'm going to just say it. I don't think this movie needed to be made. The fact that it was in development hell, to me, says it should have just remained in development purgatory. You Yeah, you know, you can tell that there was a lot of cooks in the kitchen here. Like there was three or four credited screenwriters for this movie, which is a lot. Uh, and that's just who was credited. There was probably a lot of uncredited people as well. Uh, The director of this movie, Andy Muschietti directed uh, it and it chapter two, along with this movie, he was just announced as the director for Batman brave and the bold for the new DCU. And honestly, after seeing this, I'm not really hyped with that choice because I really don't want these type of set pieces again. And when it comes to a Batman movie, like, It was just too kind of clunky when it came to the action. So that didn't really uh, give me a lot of positive vibes going forward, I guess. Well, and the CGI, the poor CGI was supposed to be, if I'm not mistaken, that was supposed to be done on purpose because it's to show you how distorted his universe is. I'm sorry, but I don't make a lot. So when I can go see a movie in Dolby or an IMAX, I expect to be entertained with some pretty damn good quality screen like pictures and all this stuff. I don't need to then be influenced to go see it in IMAX then. If you're going to give me on purpose cheesy CGI. There's no way they did that on purpose. Yeah, like that, that was a little much. You guys she, heard it. She so really sorry. hated this movie a lot. So sorry. Scratchy apologize to the viewers that scratchy benched this movie ahmed what is your score i cut it <laughs> i cut it screw that she can like it better than her dad because she didn't watch it that's why <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna give it a starter i th- don't oh God, i'm gonna give it a starter no. it did enough for me as a dc fan 
with the callbacks with Michael Keaton, with George Clooney and the Nicholas Cage stuff. And I did think that Ezra was good as the main Barry. He was, they were very annoying as the other Barry. I don't think that, I don't know. Do I want to see a sequel? Not really. Not to be honest. No, but this movie, I think is a good time. If you, <laughs> you lower your expectations no, a lot. No, there yes. Are amazing. Other movies that are coming out or that have already come out. Watch those movies. Enjoy yourselves. Watch Spider-Verse. Watch Spider-Verse. Watch Super Mario Brothers for the fifth time. Uh, shit, watch the first Super Mario Brothers with John Leguizamo, and you'll probably enjoy that more. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather see a sequel to The Room than this. Hey. Tommy Wiseau kind of looks like the younger Flash a little bit. but uh... Dude, Tommy Wiseau could have played the the effing Nega Flash. could have been Bruce Wayne at the end. He could have got out of the car and... Oh, hey. Oh, hey, Barry. <laughs> oh, hi, Barry. <laughs> uh, just, right. No. Got it. Uh, you guys tell us what you think. This is going to be a hotly debated movie, I think, for the summertime. But it is, it's fine. It, according to Tom, it is not fine. But tell us what you think. We will be back. Uh, we have Secret Invasion coming up, the new Marvel series, which is supposed to be very good. Barbie and some other fun stuff planned this summer. Uh, Ahmed, anything else you want to add before we get out of here? No, but stay tuned for more. But uh, <laughs> subscribe to us. Don't hate us if you didn't hate, if you didn't like the movie. I'm right there with you. You know, I watched it reluctantly and I called it from the beginning and I'm glad I was right because I'm not usually right about certain things, but I knew I was going to be right about this. And if you kind of liked it like me, that's all you need to know. Uh, but this has been Box Office Quarterbacks. That's my friend Ahmed. I'm Jeff. We'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>